Okay, so let's take a look at some password best practices. The first set here are Cisco password guidelines. I'm not going to go too deep into these. These are covered in other video lessons. Uh, first one is use enable secret rather than the enable password. Like I said, this is in another lesson. Basically, enable password is in plain text while the enable secret stores an MD5 hash. Use service password encryption to provide over the shoulder visual mail cipher uh, password encryption. Uh, again, we'll touch on that in more detail in a different video. Um, what this is basically doing, making sure it's in the running configuration, it's going to encrypt passwords and keys. So Joe Blow doesn't just look over your shoulder while you're perusing the running configuration and see that the uh, TACAX key for your enterprise is Snooky Pants. Instead, he's going to see a string of characters, numbers, letters that means Snooky Pants to the router but is encrypted, so it doesn't mean shit to Joe Blow hopefully. Um, username secret instead of username password. Same concept as the enable. Um, touch on that in a different video. Limit the number of uh, failed login attempts. There's multiple ways to do that. This is outside the scope of this lesson. Just want to touch on these briefly in case you're studying for the Cisco CCNA security examination as they might come up on that. And then this next set are just general password guidelines. So require users change passwords at regular intervals. Yes. Uh, make passwords case sensitive, of course. Uh, set a minimum password length restriction. That's what we're going to take a look at today. Do not allow common words or names to be used as passwords. That's uh, harkening back to that dictionary attack. Uh, require the use of numbers and special characters in passwords. And I have a little asterisk here that says these are most effective in the middle of the password instead of tacked on at the end. We saw that kind of with the um, dictionary attack. Uh, mentioned that as well. So if you have, you know, password 6969 word with you know some zeros and numbers and all that stuff in there it's much better than specifying password and then just some numbers at the end uh, new passwords should significantly differ from previous passwords that might be a little confusing verbiage what it basically means is that if you're changing your password and your old password was password 1 that you should not be using password 2 and then you know after that password 3 password 4 because these are easily you know, guessable if there's a um, sequence to your passwords. Uh, change passwords immediately if they have been compromised. This one I'll get on my soapbox real quick here. This is important in the enterprise because if somebody leaves the company, especially if somebody leaves the, the company under less than perfect conditions, you're going to want to go through and change your passwords because if this guy was a, a network admin and he had the enable password for you know most of your devices, if he knows how to dial in via out of band or whatever, it's it's a pain in the ass, but at that point you should change your passwords. Even if there's really, you don't think that this guy's going to come back and, and screw up your network, change them anyways. Um, okay, getting off soapbox. Uh, this is probably the most important part and this is more of an admin bit, but once you've created a password policy, publish it and make sure that your users understand and follow it. Now a lot of this can be enforced via software, not via Cisco IOS. Um, as we'll see, even Cisco doesn't recommend that you use Cisco IOS for your password policies, uh, for managing your passwords rather. Have this published and make sure people are aware of it. As I just alluded to, Cisco recommends, and this is directly from their documentation, as a security best practice, passwords must be managed with a TACX Plus or Radius authentication server. And that's going to be the case in any uh, enterprise network of any size. You're going to use TACX Plus or Radius as your authentication server. That's going to give you the ability to manage passwords far better than a Cisco IOS. But you will still need to know how to best manage passwords in iOS for a couple of reasons. For the enable password, you're most likely going to want or need an enable password on your local device. You're going to want to be able to manage that password and have good password policies behind that, such as setting the minimum length, uh, using enable secret rather than enable password. This is the biggie. This is the one that a lot of people forget about. It's great to have a TACX server, a radius server. You log in, it's taking care of all your authentication, everything's working great, and then your WAN goes down or your connection that gets you to that remote TACX or radius server goes down 
and now you're stuck with the only type of authentication being the authentication that's actually configured on the local device. So most places will have a means of accessing a router that has become orphaned from its authentication server and that's when you're going to need to implement these password and basically authentication best policies. And the other reason is for other types of passwords. Uh, you might have some locally configured passwords and keys such as TACX plus keys, uh, SNMP, community strings, OSPF, authentication keys, etc. You want to make these as secure as possible. So these are stored locally and used, you know, generally between routers or in the case of SNMP between an SNMP server and the router so you're going to want to make those secure so even though you know you're going to be doing most of your especially your user authentication on your TACX radius servers you still want to know some of these best practices and how to implement them for Cisco devices and as I mentioned most of the general password best practices cannot be enforced by the Cisco iOS you're not going to be able to force a user in this case the administrator that's configuring into the uh, router configuration to use um, numbers in the middle um, to use special characters stuff like that what you can do is you can and that's the, the thrust of this video is you can set a minimum password length and we saw how that can be pretty effective for straight out blunt I'm sorry blunt brute force attacks and the method that we use to implement a minimum password length is the security passwords min length command. And this bit is directly out of the command reference for this command. The security password min length command uh, provides enhanced security blah blah blah. Uh, eliminate most common passwords that are prevalent on networks such as lab and Cisco. So I can almost guarantee you that any network that's running Cisco equipment somewhere out there, there's probably going to be a device that has a password using Cisco. Uh, whether that's an enable password or just a user password or a telnet password, it's pretty prevalent. So if you set the minimum password link to six, it would effectively get rid of people being able to use Cisco as a password. Okay, and this bit says the command affects user passwords, enable passwords and secrets, and line passwords. After this command is enabled, and note after, any password that is less than the specified length will fail. So we can see here from the CLI that you type in security passwords min length and with the iOS help you can see that we can set a minimum password length of zero which would be no minimum password length up to 16. And in the documentation Cisco claims that the default for this command is 6. Didn't find that to be the case. And you can see here in this case I've created a telnet password of a single character, in this case A. I hit enter and it took it. So by default there is no minimum password length. Now again your results may vary based on iOS version and platform. This is a 12.4 version running on a 37.25 I believe. I don't remember for sure. Anyways, I think I have run into that though. Where I've tried to use Cisco as a password and the minimum length said no. So again, your mileage may vary. Not only may your mileage vary, but if you're taking the CCNA security exam, I'll say this a billion times when I'm going through these lessons, don't take my word for it. Don't believe your damn lying eyes when you're doing this on the command line. If Cisco says the default for this command is six, well then the default for this command is six. End of story. Okay, so we can see this in action. Now we've set the security password minimum length to six. In this example, then we go ahead and try to uh, configure an enable password of one, two, three, four, five, which obviously has five characters. iOS says, no, nope, not enough characters. Gotta be at least six, and your password configuration has failed, so this password is not configured. Now what I found is this does not affect the state of pre-existing passwords. So in this case, prior to us enabling the minimum password length of six, we had an enable password that was five characters, one, two, three, four, five. We set this uh, minimum password link to six and then exit out of there. Okay, well in this case I went into you know, privilege level one and then went into enable mode, specified one, two, three, four, five, and it was still valid. So not only did it not flag me here saying that you know this was too short, make sure that you change your passwords, that password is still in use with only five characters. I was able to get into enable mode with a five character password. So keep that in mind that it's not gonna retroactively go check all your passwords and say, oh yeah, hey, um, you're gonna need to update your enabled password or this username password, blah, blah, blah. But it will make sure that you use the minimum password length for any new uh, passwords that you create. So in this case, we've set the uh, security password min link to six characters. I'm creating a new username password and I want to specify one, two, three, four, five as that password I get the same 
message saying you need to have at least six characters, this configuration has failed.